Hi everyone, welcome to another webisode of The Good Doctor on EasyLiving.com. Today I'm in the company of Dr. Rajesh Shah at the Allied Diagnostic Center and we're going to be talking about imaging. One of the important things about medicine and imaging is that today we get a lot more visibility. Isn't that correct, Dr. Shah? That's very right. Uh, let me take you through the, the past couple of decades where um, radiology has really evolved. Uh, I'll talk about imaging in general and then we'll move to a little more specific in musculoskeletal or uh, neuroimaging. Um, if you consider the time about two or three decades ago, radiology, all that it had was simple x-rays or ultrasound imaging. Mm -hmm. But if you see over the past two decades, in the 80s, the CT scan came in and in the 90s, the MRI came in. And since then, we haven't stopped. With the development of the computer age and the information technology, we have a lot of tools now. Uh, imaging has become much easier, much better in quality, high definition, high resolution, whereby actually we can visualize uh, things which are going on inside the body. And that's uh, important because it takes the guesswork out of medicine. Precisely. Now let me explain to you a few things how we go about it. Uh, if we think about imaging, it's not imaging alone, it's good quality cross-sectional imaging mm -hmm. whereby we can get into the tissues, see actually what's going on and also it adds a fundamental dimension of functionality into the imaging. Uh, let me explain this better with an example. Sure. Uh, for example, if you have uh, an injury to the bone, we know by function how the bone reacts to the injury. We see that in the form of bone marrow edema, which is picked up on high-end imaging such as MRI. You may not get anything on the x-rays, you may not see a fracture, but you know that there has been an injury and the body has reacted in this particular way. Similarly, if we have a patient who suffers from, a, say, a suspected stroke, we are not sure whether what the diagnosis is in the first few hours. Mm -hmm. In that case, we see something called as diffusion-weighted imaging in MRI which actually at the time of insult, immediately after that, it affects the movement of water in between the cells. So right. that's a functional issue and that is imaged and picked up very early on MRI. So it's not only the structural imaging, but it's also the functionality of this. The way the body responds or the tissues respond to any external insult, such as say trauma, infection, tumor and so on and so forth. So by the imaging characteristics, we are able to differentiate between these things. So this is how significantly it has involved and not only has this helped us in imaging but also helps the clinicians in better understanding the disease process because if they know that the body reacts in this way or this is how the pathology goes, they are in a better condition to, uh, to actually treat the patient and go about the treatment planning. Well this is great because what you're saying is now doctors have access uh, into the body. They can see um, how, uh, down to the molecular level. Are, exactly. we, are we there yet? Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, if you see uh, the, what I, uh, the example that I just mentioned to you about the diffusion weighted imaging, it is down to the molecular level. It is down at the cellular level wow. because it is the movement of water in between the cells which gets affected and immediately we know that this is an area, it's like a pre-warning sign and it tells you that this is the area where the infarct is going to come through. So this is something we know in the first 90 minutes or, or, or about two hours between, uh, between the episode and the actual in imaging time. So that is very quick and these are the changes which will not be seen on CT scan even up to six hours. Right. So we have this window where we can treat the patient really early and get things going from that point of view. All right, so based on what you're saying, Dr. Shah, is that there's a, a, a priority now for doctors to get imaging because it gives them again that access into the body to, for detection, for de to, to see the disease and to see how the patient um, needs to be treated. Uh, this is very important because in a number of clinical pathways and also the protocols that doctors follow worldwide and these are accredited by uh, international institutes, uh, imaging is moving into the forward uh, blocks. I mean, earlier imaging was pushed into a later stage when some trials have been given and then you go on to imaging. But now it is forming uh, one of the important modalities very earlier on in imaging. Uh, let me explain this uh, with a few examples again. I'm sure. going to give a few, few examples from the musculoskeletal system and the uh, neurological systems. Um, one is what we call is um, in imaging the pre-warning signs or the pre-signs. Now, especially say uh, an athlete who's been training hard for a number of weeks, he complains of aches in his shins and uh, the clinician takes an x-ray and he's not sure there's no fracture there yet, but the patient complains of pain. 
So that's when we go to an MRI and an MRI will show that the stage before the actual fracture occurs, mm -hmm. there's a lot of bone marrow edema. So we right. know that he's heading for a fracture. Mm -hmm. So at, if we image the patient at this stage, we can avoid a possible complication of the patient landing into a frank fracture. Mm -hmm. Because you can imagine the treatment that the patient has to undergo with a fracture, with a cast for six weeks and so on, that's much more difficult. If we can arrest it at this, for example, how they, uh, the sci-fi movies show it as, uh, uh, you know, pre-crime and we can get there and arrest the process, it's something of that sort. Right. If we can get the process sorted out and the pathology known beforehand, we can avoid the complication of reaching to a fracture. Right. So that's a big plus. Again, another example is rheumatoid arthritis. Right. Uh, this can be quite a disability because as the disease progresses, the patient comes up with a lot of deformities in the hands and legs. Now, in this, we have microimaging or in MRI, we have imaging available to detect small micro erosions which occur in the small joints of the hands. If we know that the erosions are going to come there, then we can, before the actual erosion and the destruction of the bone begins, we can catch that stage. Brilliant. So if we can catch that, the, the clinician knows, he correlates it with the lab parameters, knows that there's a rheumatological factor, he can treat it much earlier. And because of that, you can prolong the disability or even prevent it to some extent. Mm. So these are the reasons why imaging earlier on helps better rather than later. Because first of all, it causes uh, the patient to go through early treatment, mm -hmm. prevent the disabilities, prevent certain complications such as avoiding surgery, and overall, it can improve the quality of life of the patient. Well, thank you very much for this insightful information. Right. I certainly learned a lot just in these few uh, minutes that we've spent time together. If you've got any thoughts, comments, or questions about this subject matter, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching The Good Doctor on easyliving.com where you can find anything and everything lifestyle.